Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Mole Trap here, coming at you with another StarCraft commentary. We got a game here between these two gentlemen on your screen right there, Light and Shine. And this is a kind of a fun game here. So this is a game from the Winner's League from 2009. You can see it popping up there for a second. Uh, it popped up. This is just recording this off the old YouTubes. Um, but yeah, this is from 2009, and so, you know, this is a an interesting game because these two players are two of the best players in the ASL. And um, so this is a bit of a pre-post view of a uh, matchup that could happen in the round of 16. Now, their group in the round of 16 has already happened, but... I'm not going to spoil exactly what happens in it because I don't know if people have watched it yet. I'm going to spoil the round of 24. I guess I already have because I said that <laughs> that they're all, they're both out of the round of 24. Well, Light got a seed into the round of 16 because he was uh, the winner of the last ASL. Um, Shine did make it out of his group into the round of 16, and they are in the same group. Uh, it is possible that they don't play against each other at all. I haven't actually seen those games. Um... But, um, anyways, so this is like a post preview because it's like a preview of it if you've already, if you haven't already seen those round of 16 games yet. Um, but it's after the fact. Anyway, so, um, it'll be fun to see what these guys can put up. Uh, so, mo so long ago, uh, I guess what, this is 13 years ago? 13 years ago, approximately, that these guys played this game. And this is an ace match, by the way, between their two teams. Uh, in the Winners League as well. So this is kind of a cool cool match to see who's going to actually win the entire series as well. Um, real quick note, ladies and gentlemen, I am planning on... Oops, I need to drop my phone, which has my calendar on it. The 24th of September, I'm going to be doing a special live stream. Um, you guys, some of you, some of you watching this have been following me since the beginning, right? And if you don't remember, the beginning was 2007. It was September of 2007. So that means I uh, it's about it's this month it marks 15 years since I first started casting StarCraft. 15 years. And so I'm doing a celebratory uh, long live stream with uh, it's probably going to be a subathon as well. So if uh, basically if people want to donate then it'll go longer, but at the very least I think I'm going to do probably like a 6-hour stream at the minimum and do a, like a longer stream do some maybe viewer games. I'm going to try and get some people on to do interviews from the old days. And um, so it'll be, it should be a fun time. It should be very interesting. Um, I haven't worked out the details quite yet about exactly what's going to happen. It's going to be something, something interesting and fun and, and a longer stream. It's going to be on the 24th of September. So mark your calendars if you're interested in that. Probably going to be starting at, I'm thinking like 10 or 11 Pacific uh, Standard Time. And then we'll go from there. So anyway, um, with that side note out of the way, I'm going to put out a whole video to just kind of announce that when it happens. But uh, oh, this is this SEV going to get a drone kill? Two hits left. No, the second drone is going to like chase it off. And he's going to go ahead and turn that into a hatchery, rejuvenating its hit points and expanding it up to 1,500. It's like, oh, you think I have eight hit points? No, I have, I have 1,000. 500 hit points now. I'm a building. Come at me now, bro. Come at me, SCV. Now that I'm a building, you ain't, you ain't stepping, are you? I'm actually making like really awkward, unpracticed like hand gestures right now as if I was like taunting someone to fight me or something. I don't know. Uh, please don't fight me. Anyway, um, Actually, speaking of which, please don't fight me IRL because I'm also going to be at TwitchCon in uh, October. Uh, if you guys are interested in that, I will be there. Uh, so far, I keep asking people on li the live stream if anyone's going to TwitchCon and no one has said they are. So I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to do like a meetup or anything like that because there doesn't seem to be anyone to meet up with. Uh, we'll see, though. So anyway, if any of y'all are going to be at TwitchCon, let me know. Let me know in the comments. And, um, you know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll put something together. Um, anyway, oh, this vulture snuck in behind there. It's going to get one kill. Not too bad. Not too bad. It's better than zero. 
But uh, I think he was hoping for... Had higher expectations for that Vulture for sure. Um, it looks like he's not trying to do too much Vulture harass though. It was just kind of like, well, you know what? I'm getting a start. I'm going for Starports. That's the main thing here. And by the way, if you hadn't noticed, there's two Starports putting out Wraiths right now for Light. This is kind of crazy. Um, double Starport Wraiths. Shine has the Hydralis Den already. So he probably is going to be fine. Um, as you can see, there's neutral temples on this map that uh, Light is trying to break through to try and get to an expansion. Uh, I, I don't remember the name of this map off the top of my head, actually, but I vaguely remember how it works. And there's like kind of expansion. Like, if you want to take the whole expansion, you have to go around and up, and you can kind of see that on the mini map a little bit. Um, but if you break down that temple, you can actually mine the minerals from the behind, and you don't get the gas, and it's a longer distance, but. At least it's like a free expansion without being, having to protect much. And actually, Shine is going in here with some... Wait, the Marines are attacking the temple. They're not over here to defend. There's no SCVs to defend the depot as well. The depot goes down. There are Zerglings and Lights made. And Wraiths are not even in position to try and help. The Wraiths are actually going to die to Hydralis because Light is so busy microing against this. No, he does bring the Hydralis back. So they're not going to die to those Hydras. But these SCVs are just getting absolutely slaughtered while Zergling, uh, trying to battle Zerglings. I'm not sure if it was the best move, but actually, with the vulture there oh he's now we're switching to repairing the vulture that was a smart move there puts down the machine shop right in front of the last zerglings dying breath so he knows that that's going to happen but still um continue to build raids here as well but that was a really really important move there just running in with i mean what did he he lost like eight or ten zerglings not a very big investment considering he killed a depot he killed several icvs he almost got that vulture um because he was like trying to use the SCVs as a wall for the Vulture, but then it didn't quite work out. And now the Hydrosk is like, aha! You want to put Marines behind your wall and defend against Zerglings? Well, these Hydrosks have range, buddy. Old buddy, old pal. Um, Wraith with five kills on it there, by the way. Uh, might be Overlord kills in addition to drone kills, but he's got some catching up to do, I think. Light has to do some damage, some more damage with these Wraiths, and that's a good start to it, killing those Overlords. I mean, if you think about the cost of it, every Overlord kill is kind of like it's like 1.75 drones because it's it's one larva but it's the cost of two drones so depending on how you count it um it's it, it's kind of an expensive early game unit to lose um the hydras are just kind of chilling around though he hasn't really gotten a, quite enough hydras to completely stop these uh race but i don't know if he wants to if you get too many hydras and then they go into like siege tanks for example or even bio um it could be a real problem. So, Wraiths gallivanting around. I'm not sure if he's going to continue building too many more Wraiths. Here we see an expansion going on for Light. I think that's, that makes a lot of sense. Right now, Shine is kind of stuck in his base a bit. He has to chill back and just protect. Look, at we see Spores and Hydras just hanging around everywhere. If he, if he tries to move out of his base too much, um, he's just going to lose stuff uh, in his main uh, to the Wraiths. I guess... I mean, like, one spore in the main and the nat is actually almost enough to kill, you know, 70 or 80 wraiths or something like that, I think. Very, very strong. Wraiths, uh, not very strong against... Oh, and he might get caught by these hydras on the south, though. He does escape out the side. He's doing a good job of microing these, hunting around these maybe... Oh, he didn't quite have enough wraiths to get a one-shot on the drone, and he pulls that drone away so he doesn't get killed. So that's pretty nice. Um... Engineer Bay going down, and uh, this is for dual purpose. I think there's always the possibility in this instance that Shine could switch into Mutas. Um, Wraiths actually don't fare too well against Mutas if there's uh, Overlords around. Um, so it's smart for him to get some turrets up so he can kind of deal with that as well. But also Lurkers, right? He's seen the Hydralis. He's seen the Lair. It's a really obvious choice to get some Lurkers in a way. Um... Lurker's not too good against Wraiths, of course, but... Oh, what are these... What are these Kurs doing? Is he just hunting for... What's going on here? That's interesting. He saw the Scourge, and he actually canceled the turret. Oh, he's just, like, trying to hunt for Wraiths, I guess. But that's not, not gonna work at all. I think seeing those Scourge, he was like, Oh, well, if he made those Scourge, he's not making Mutas, so I'm gonna cancel this second turret. And now the Mutas are coming out, and it's, you know, two or two or three less mutas than it would have been if he hadn't made the scourge but um 
I don't know, man. This is very interesting. Maybe seeing the scourge. Maybe it was the other way around, actually. Maybe seeing the scourge, he said, "Okay, uh, this is not lurkers drop, and so I don't need to." I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what was going on there, but it looked like he canceled the turret there when those scourge came in. So it's a very interesting reaction. Um, Wraiths still. I don't know why I keep using the word gallivanting. I was going to say gallivanting again. It's, it's they're not exactly gallivanting, are they? Um, moving around the map, just hunting for free kills. They're going to be chased away. Now, it's interesting that the rates are slower than the Medalisks, but faster than the speed-upgraded Overlords. <laughs> so it's like they can, they have to keep running away from the Mutas until they get out of cloak range, and then they can turn on the Mutas, and then the Mutas have to run back to the Overlords or wait for the Overlords to catch up. It's an interesting little positional dance that they go through. It's a nice little... Do -si do Um Kamita's coming in here. He's got some wraiths as well. Uh, sorry, some scourge as well in case he can see those wraiths. And the Overlord's now coming in a little bit late, but they are here. They're going to be able to participate in this battle. There's a lot of Milos here as well. He's trying to dodge back to the turrets to try and, you know, take cover from the turrets against the scourge. It's interesting that he's actually targeting the Mutalists and not the... Uh, you know, my first instinct was, oh, we'll kill the scourge and then you kind of have to don't worry about them. But actually, when you're a pro gamer... The perfect play is to just dodge the Scourge and kill the Mutas because they're the main threat against your race and your army because you can dodge the Scourge. And now he does actually fight them off enough. He dives in too far. Shine going in too hard with the Mutas with turrets underneath and the bunker as well. The Wraith's doing some damage, of course, in addition to that. And he's driven back. It looked like he was doing it really well. And then all of a sudden, the Muta count was just kind of dwindled before our eyes. And it was just like, okay, is there only a couple turrets there. It looks like one of the turrets was killed. But um, unfortunate not to see some Lings thrown in there, actually. That would have made for a much stronger attack if he'd had eight or ten Lings underneath all that. Attacking the bunker, killing off turrets, going for SCVs. Although, I see that there's tanks there. So maybe the Lings would have never even gotten close enough. Um, coming around behind here, this is nice. He's going to be able to get in here. And there's no turret here now that's been killed off. So he can kind of do a little bit more work on this side here. There's only a single Overlord here to protect against Cloak. But the thing is, these wraiths have been kind of dodging around long enough and cloaking and decloaking uh, that they're really low on energy probably. So I don't think the Cloak is actually too big of a deal right now. I don't think he's going to be able to cloak. Because even if he cloaks some of the wraiths, like not all of them are going to have full energy. And so only like half the wraiths are going to cloak um, or for very long. So he can just kill the ones that are decloaked. And, uh, oh, this is not, this is no, oh no. Okay, what is he doing here? I guess maybe he didn't realize those tanks were there after all. No, he knew they were there. Um, but he actually could have stood back and maybe killed off the turret without too much threat. And now, this is interesting, light switching back up into bio after getting the siege tanks and a bunch of wraiths. He only got a couple siege tanks, just enough that, like, you know, Two siege tanks means he's secure against approximately a lot of uh, hydralisks. Oh, oh, is he going to lose some raids here? Nope, actually he did have enough energy to cloak them all. And he's actually going to run over here to get some free overlord kills. Oh no, he actually didn't want to be near the overlords, but then the mutas like fell back when he cloaked and <laughs> instead of chasing them to the overlords, which would have been a nice move. I like Shun getting the third base in the top right. Uh, he's going to get a spore colony there, but it's going to be too late, I think. Um, well, we'll see here, but it looks like, yeah, I think he's going to lose all these drones before the spore really does any good. So, oh, no mind. The spore is up. JK. Got a few, got a few drone kills there, though. Uh, for some reason, I thought that was the colony morphing and not the spore upgrade, so I wasn't expecting to be that fast. But yeah, switching back into bio for light here. Um, he's gonna move that second starport over and just switch into SK Terran is what it looks like. He's probably gonna he's got the science facility. He's gonna start making vessels is what I'm imagining here. Uh, lurkers coming out as well. So this is like a this is turning into looking kind of like a normal TV TVZ, but from like eight minutes ago, right? Eight minutes of craziness has happened in the meantime, and now we're getting into bio and. Uh, Oh, that was a, that was a, I don't know about that stim. I don't know about that stim. Um, it's a lot of medic energy going to waste just to walk over to that temple. Um, 
which is going to go down pretty quickly, I guess. It looks like Light, I mean, he has his natural expansion because he's going to try and take the back of that temple base as kind of a pseudo third. Um, but yeah, you know, Medic Marine, Science Vessel versus Lurkers with maybe some mutas lying around. But then there's also the vestiges of this kind of craziness that's been happening, and there's uh, a pile of wraiths, and there's several hydralisks, and, and what have you. So it's a very, very interesting game. And it looks like, oh, this is interesting. He's kind of mounting forces in that bottom left expansion. Light wants to take it. Nice free wraith uh, action here. Oh, he's loaded up. He's loaded up the lurkers into overlords. The meters are there to support. And the wraiths are in his main. So Shine knows that he has a bit of free reign here to go in here. But the overlords might get caught by the mech marines. No, the mech marines fall back in fear of the lurkers dropping out. And instead, he's just forced back. And now, Shine has an entrenched position behind Light's base uh, in the back of Light's main. He's going to take out one of the... Oh my gosh, he only has one vessel. He's going to lose his star points before any more vessels get out as well. That one vessel, if it goes down, there are Scourge in the area. There's Mutas as well. If he loses that vessel, he will have to depend on uh, just Comsat to try and deal with all these lurkers. And that can be tricky. I guess he does have turrets around as well, but some of the turrets have already gone down. One is burning as well. It's going to be going down very quickly. So this lurker drop is beautiful. If he can get on top of the barracks as well, that might be the finishing blow for this game and for this series. Remember, this is the ace match. He's going after the engineering bay. He's going after the SCVs in the main as well. Main supply line, they are going to be able to squeeze out the side, but it looks like they're locked in. They're locked in. He might be able to kill them off, but at least they're not mining right now. Medic Marine stimming in. He's actually going to send back the SCVs to mine again. Uh, just on the... the Self-assurance that he was going to be able to kill off those lurkers with the stim Marines. And it looks like... Somehow he's cleaned this up, actually. I didn't expect... Oh, because there's some tanks coming back in there. So that's, that's why he was able to clean up those lurkers. I didn't realize that the tank fire was going on in the background. Um... I was talking so loudly to myself that I couldn't hear massive artillery pieces going off in the background. It's going to rebuild the start board on top of that control tower as well in order to keep vessels going. Although he is, it looks like the control tower is burning, so we might have to repair that. So, um, anyway, Wraith's doing lots of work here. Since they were made, he's been doing a really good job of making sure they stayed alive. Able to do tons of damage over the course of this game. They've he's killed off 15 drones, maybe, with the race. And, of course, lots of mutas and overlords as well. Um, in any case, so now, having killed a substantial force of shines as it dropped into his main, uh, Light's feeling confident moving out here onto the map, trying to go for that third base. Uh, now, Shine can really just kind of get a few lurkers at the top of the ramp, I think, and he'll probably be okay there. Because there's not a lot of vessels. Because he killed both the starports. So there's only one single vessel. He can't irradiate. It's going to have maybe two irradiates. Probably, I guess, in there. Um, oh, oh, race getting caught by Hydras. He's going to lose one. Almost loses a second. But no, he actually didn't put any lurkers there. And he just walks up the ramp to kill his base. Where are the lurkers? What are they doing? The drones are going to be able to run away here. It looks like the lurkers are trying to come in the back, but a two marines are going to force those lurkers to burrow, which delays long enough for him to ki finish killing off the hatchery and get a nice little spread here against this. Imagine if there was just two lurkers like on top of the ramp. This never would have happened. He would still have the base. He would still have the drones, and he would just have, wouldn't have lost as much stuff as well. He guess he still has some of the drones. He's going to be able to replant the hatchery, but that was a huge... I mean, that was like a one-two punch for uh, for light against shine there. Or maybe, uh, maybe a parry repost would be a better way of putting it. The parry of the attack, which allowed him to see an opening to counterattack. That's what a repost is. It's counterattack and fencing. And um, it's, uh, yeah, two, two successes in a row, putting light... Uh, probably in the lead here. Now, Light is really only on these two bases. He's kind of got this third half base here. Oh, man. Cloak Race just running and killing a sunken colony. You hate to see it. I guess unless you're a Terran player. But, um, Shine trying to make the best of this situation. He's trying to... He's re-expanded to the top right. He's trying to, uh, uh, also expand to, I think, the top right natural. I didn't see exactly where that new hatchery was. These wraiths just being super annoying, man. I don't think... Again, I don't think he's made any more either. I think these are just the same wraiths. And, uh, so they've just been surviving a long time and just... He's been really, really good about 
making sure that he's keeping them around and just finding opportunities to get free damage with them now that he's invested into them. So, very, very cool play by, by Light here. Um, anyway, we'll see if Shine can pull something off here. He does have the Zerg Trump card. And we're seeing them crawling around right now in front of us, ready to defile the Terran army. Uh, you know, if you can get one plague down on those Wraith, they're all gone uh, very quickly after that. Uh, Dark Swarm's, of course, obviously going to be good as well. Oh, he's going to put down a swarm on the Lurkers and just lurk up this supply line. Now, the Siege Tanks... Look at these Wraiths. No, sorry. It's not going to work this time. Um, the Siege Tanks are going to be able to uh, deal with that eventually, but... It's going to take a while, and in the meantime, he's going to lose a lot of mining time. So, the basically, Light mined out in his main, I think, almost. And so he's just down to one base. This is a really interesting spot. This is a really good spot to hold as the Zerg. But there are Firebats underneath there as well. Looks like the Firebats have been killed off, except for one. The Siege Tank's hammering away at the Lurkers. There's only one or two Lurkers underneath that swarm. So this is a beautiful position to hold if he had more stuff. But Shine just does not have the army... Uh, the unit count, to, he just, just didn't have the body count to stop himself from uh, becoming one of the bodies that gets counted. He's going to lose the game is what I'm trying to say here. Because now his natural is completely dead. And there's the GG. There's the GG coming from Shine. And White takes the game and wins the ace match for his team. Back in 2009. So interesting. I, it's just always so fun to look back at these old players and see them in another era and think about how they're still playing the game, you know, years and years and years later. Um, and, um, yeah, it's just really, really cool to see that. Anyway, so, yeah, thanks very much for watching, everybody. Again, uh, September 24th is going to be the special live stream. More details to come. Uh, TwitchCon is October 7th through 9th or something like that uh it's whatever that weekend is and um i'm gonna be at twitchcon as well so i'm probably gonna end up taking a couple weeks off of live streaming because of the fact that i'll be on the road we'll see how that goes uh, but yeah so these guys both you know in the asl round of 16 and you can actually see here this is a uh, uh this is so if you guys don't know, Tastos is they put out VODs of the ASL game. So I usually wait for the for Tastos to do the do their commentary on the VODs and then I watch it later. So just go to you can see the name there, Africa TV Esports is the name of the channel. If you just search YouTube for let's just do it right here. Can you let's see? I think I think this will record. I'm not sure if this will record properly. Uh yeah. Let's see if this works. Ah, no, don't full screen. What are you doing? Ah Africa TV. There you go. I've searched for it before and you just click there and then you have to kind of scroll down to find the uh, the videos, the taste doses videos, just click on videos to see the recent videos and you, you just look for tasteless and artosis handsome faces and that's how you can find out where the uh, the ASL games are that you want to find and um, yeah so should be exciting to see their games in the ASL if they play against each other um because i think the way the round of 16 works it's not guaranteed that they will uh, depending on how you know if they both if one wins and one loses their first game or whatever i don't think they're playing against each other in the first series so who knows anyway um i could be wrong i don't um but i'm not going to show the uh the results on screen in case you want to watch them um hope you all enjoyed it thanks very much for watching gg and uh yeah definitely watch the even even if you know kind of what happens i recommend going back and, and watching the round of 24 games for the asl if you haven't because there's, there's been a lot of really exciting really interesting games it's been really fun to watch so all right take care everybody gg thanks for watching